In Ephesians 3 verses 7 to 13, Paul comes and explains his ministry and the purpose of his ministry. We find that the Apostle Paul all the time goes back to what the gospel is all the time. I think that is why Ephesians is one of the most powerful books in the Bible, most, most of the, one of the most powerful letters that Paul wrote because he continually goes back and goes back and goes back and rehearses himself. And it's almost as if as you read it, it can become boring. And even as we go through this verse by verse, you can get the feeling we are saying the same thing over and over and over. But that is exactly what the Apostle Paul is doing. And every time he does that, he takes it from different angles. First, he takes it from the angle of the power that manifested in the Gentiles and brought forth a brand new life. Then he comes and he says, God came to unite heaven with earth. Then he comes and he says, God came to unite uh, um, Jew and Gentile and now he comes and he wants to talk about the union between him and the church that there will not be a separation between him and the people and the people stand back from the gospel but they would continue in absolute unity if I read Ephesians and I look at the way Paul looked at the church and how he stood in defense of the church and how he wanted the church to be in unity because of the oneness logic that he follows, the oneness between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and how we have been included and made heirs, both Jew and Gentiles, and how that oneness came, I cannot but conclude that if Paul would walk in the church today, that he would be devastated to see the, the, um, the separation there is in the church, and that People are not of one mind thinking the same thing, having the same logic. As I was thinking about that last night and uh, just going through uh, this message in my mind and through what God is doing in the earth, it can easily be that one can feel despondent and say, Lord, what is going on in the world? But I want to assure you that the way God looks at church and the way we look at church is not always the same thing. There, God, although we find the church is, like some people might say, a mile wide but only an inch deep, it doesn't matter. This church is carrying the life of God and God is busy doing a great thing in the earth in the church. As we start to understand and see this, we realize that the Apostle Paul had the mind of God, which is uniting things and making it one. One, not just in believing on or agreeing on things, but one in heart where he is, where there's one God, one Lord, one Father of all, wherein one life manifests in all. I'm not saying that everybody would do the same thing and think the same thing. What I'm saying is, is that that life would, in our different personalities and different people will manifest as one life wherein all people in their own ways love, where all people in their own way is kind, not because of the observance of the Ten Commandments that says you must love God or you must love your neighbor, because we know that that is the ministration of death and the power uh, of sin is the law, is in the law. Uh, but where it is because it is born from the Holy Spirit. So we see here in Ephesians 3 verse 7 to 13 that Paul comes and he's explaining his ministry and the purpose of his ministry. Verse 7 in the King James, Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. So what he's saying here is, he is saying that even the very ministry that I have wasn't something that I've decided to do. It wasn't something that I have now decided, well, let me start this ministry. No, he says that um, this new man, this revelation of the new man, the, this whole ministry that I have is according to the gift of grace which God has given me, which is by the effectual working of his power. So what he is saying is, he's saying the fact that I'm preaching to you now is a fruit of the resurrection. That is what he's saying. It wasn't, well, I heard a call and now I've tried to obey a call. And since I've got a call, I must now fulfill my calling by doing certain things. 
No, the Apostle Paul comes from a completely different perspective. He comes from and he takes the logic of God that raised Jesus from the dead, the God that came and brought forth a new creation, a new kind of a being, a new man in the earth, Jesus, which includes both Jew and Gentile. And he uh, he takes and he we can refer to the chapter 1 verses 1 to 5 where he says to, the, to these Gentiles that look at the power that came forth in you the moment you heard and believed the gospel. That's the very same way. The way that you Gentiles start to love all saints and be kind to all saints. The very same supernatural God-given way that it came forth in your life. That's how this ministry of preaching the gospel to you comes forth in my life and the effective working power. In other words, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, that is the power that brings this ministry forth. And then he says, Unto me, who am the least of all the saints, this grace is given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Now, that word amongst the Gentiles in the Greek, one of the meanings there is also in the Gentiles. Now, many times we want to think of, well, let me, just, let me just explain this first and then I'll get to what we think sometimes. He says, unto me, who am the least of the saints. Paul was the least of the saints. That's, and he, the reason why I called himself the least of the saints was because he persecuted the church. In other words, he was a Jewish person that went to kill and make havoc of the body of Jesus Christ. And that's why he called him by his own works when it comes to the saints, when it comes to Jewish people or even obedience to the law or even in the church when he looked at himself, he says, I'm the least of all because of that. We can see that in his love for the church, he was still battling with what he has done. Although he knew it was past, although he even said, I did it ignorantly. Uh, we can see that he was still battling with that in his mind there. Unto me, whom the least of the saints, this grace was given that I should preach amongst the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. So what he is saying is, is this grace has empowered me to preach that in the Gentiles or amongst the Gentiles, everything that Christ has gained in his resurrection. Or what he's saying here, another way of saying this would be that unto me was given that I should preach that the rule of the Messiah and his reign is also over the Gentiles. And as he would reign over the Jewish people with the promises that he has given the Jewish people, which was that they would be blessed and that they would have eternal life, that same Truth is true for the Gentiles. This can be preached that Jesus is the Messiah in Gentile circles as well. I think that would be the best way when we can uh, explain the word in, that word amongst there. Another word for it in the Greek would be the word in, that he would preach in the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. It's like I would say, I would preach in New York or I would preach in um, in. South Africa, or I would preach in Zambia. Now I can say I'm preaching in the Gentiles, this unsearchable riches of Christ. And what is coming with the fourth with is the riches of Christ as Messiah. You see, we have explained Christ as the surname of Jesus. And Christ is not the surname of Jesus. Christ means he is the dominator. He is the ruler. He is the king. He is the one that rules in uh, and establishes his kingdom. He is the conqueror or he's the conqueror or the victor over that which destroys man. And he is now establishing his kingdom in the earth. And the way he does it is by persuading people of this truth. And then as they believe upon that, he brings this truth and this kingdom forth in the lives of those. And it is so powerful, the Apostle Paul said, that Jesus would not only bring life to this earth and show the wisdom of God in the church by how the church would walk in love and kindness and the fruit of the Spirit, which is effortless, but that he will also conquer physical death and even restore the whole planet into the glory of the resurrection of Jesus. That is what the Apostle Paul had in mind. Uh, verse 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now, 
what he's saying here is, He's saying everything that we see now, that the Gentiles and the Jews are all included, that Jesus is the Messiah of all people, all of this was created by Jesus or brought forth by Jesus. And he says that his job is to make all people see their fellowship in what God has brought forth when he included all all people and brought forth a brand new man. So what the Apostle Paul is saying is, he is preaching a new reality about every man. That would mean that when he goes to a Gentile city, he would say to them, you have a new Messiah. You have a Messiah. The Messiah of the Jews is your Messiah. You know what? He became sin and since you had sin and the Jews had sin and he became sin and died away sin, your sin has been conquered and the power of sin is broken and he would preach man included in the finished work of Jesus. Listen to what he says in verse 9 here. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. In other words, I want all people to see how they are in fellowship in this mystery. That is what he's saying. He says, to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what he's saying is, is that God had an eternal purpose according, uh, eternal purpose whereby he made man. And as this eternal purpose is being established in the church and in the believer, which would be the life of God manifesting in people, God sharing his quality of life with people, love, kindness, the fruit of the spirit, uh, a, a kindness towards people, the, the, just the very kingdom of God starting to manifest in people as we see the gifts of the Spirit, uh, healings and miracles and the supernatural start to take place. And as God restores things in the church, there, through that, the wisdom of God would be made known to whosoever looks upon that from the outside, be that earthly governments, be that earthly systems, be it any religion from uh, any false god, if you want to call it like that, or any other god, they would look at atheists, whatever, would look upon the church and see in the church the wisdom of God, how God works through a simple logic of including everybody in Christ and once everybody was included in Christ in his death and in his resurrection now through belief in that that truth starts to manifest and he starts to make forth bring forth his wisdom as the creator wherein he creates a brand new life in us that is very important to understand uh, it is what some might understand under this verse and what I used to understand under this verse is that it is my job to make known to powers and principalities the love of God and what God has accomplished in Jesus. And that can destroy your life because it's not the job of the church to show forth the wisdom of God. No, it is God bringing forth what he's dreamt for the church from the beginning and as he brings forth what he has dreamt from the beginning all powers principalities be it angels or demons or whatever would watch upon this would see the logic and the original plan that god had amen um, and then it says that all of this is according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, he had an eternal purpose and this eternal purpose that he had could be manifested in Jesus after man has fallen. It could be restored and made new in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hear the powerful words there. He comes and he doesn't just say in Jesus. He says in Christ the Messiah, Jesus, the man who walked on the earth, to, we would say today 2,000 years ago, back then we would say 30 years ago, or whatever it would be. He said, according to the Messiah, Jesus, the one that was born from Mary, 
which is the Lord. And then in the, in, in the mind of Paul, he would say he is the Messiah that the Jews wanted. He is the, the Jesus that was born according to the seed of David. And he is Lord. He lords it over sin and death. That is what, what would be in his mind. And he says that he has purposed something in the beginning and that purpose has found its fulfillment in Jesus now, ending all sin and death and breaking the power wherein what God has trained for man can manifest by the power of the Holy Spirit. Not man's decision to try and do good. Verse 13, Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulation for you, which is your glory. So he says that Jesus has come and brought all this forth to manifest all life in you. And I can see the life that God has for you. I know what God's purpose is and what he wants to bring forth in you. So I don't want to see you sad because if you are sad about this, it is like counterproductive. You are to have joy and peace and absolute life which and that life which Christ brings forth. That is my plan. That is my purpose. And that is that also. And that is born from Jesus Christ. Right. Let's read uh, Ephesians 3 from verse 8 to 13 in the Resurrection Bible. It says, Even unto me, the man who persecuted the church was given to see and declare all people included in the Messiah's work. The riches that came by Christ were for all people and belongs to all people. I'm empowered by the power of this new life to declare this life to the Gentiles. My passion is to declare every person's perfect union with the work of the Messiah. I am not to exclude the Gentiles from the lavish gift of righteousness revealed in Jesus, neither will I exclude the Jews. You know, sometimes when we start to realize uh, that the law was fulfilled, we, we as people, believers, want to kind of be antagonistic towards the Jews. Paul says, I'm not excluding Jew or Gentile. There's one new man. The original plan, which was from the beginning of creation, was brought into manifestation by Jesus. He brought it all into the tangible for us all to experience. As you believe and are seeing the manifestation of the new life consuming your old life, angels, demons, and all the forces that is governing the world, as you see it, are beholding the depths of God revealed in you. I want to read that again. As you believe and are seeing the manifestation of the new life consuming your old life, angels, demons, and all forces is, that is governing the world as you see it are beholding the depths of God revealed in you. They are learning as you are living, really living, living for the first time. This extravagant life you are starting to experience and the way by which it comes forth in you is His plan in action through Jesus. This plan is not something new it has always been his idea to give his life. He is bringing you to the manifestation of sons, which is immortality in his return. Because of him, the life we live is a loud and bold declaration of our access to the divine nature of God, the life unto eternal life by his resurrection. Verse 13, and I end off by reading verse 13. Don't let the persecution I experience distract you. I know I am in jail because of the message I preached, bringing you the life you experience today. Don't confuse my experience with the hope of the resurrection. Don't be discouraged. Stand strong and enjoy His life in you. What would break my heart is if you decide to walk away from the faith on account of my trouble. There is the hope of the resurrection that I want to see manifest in you. Stick to trusting what Jesus has accomplished. It will end in your glorification. Is this not absolutely powerful? You know, I just think that as we read in the Resurrection Bible, verse 8 to 13, in one sitting, we can just see everything. We can see the heart of Paul, the love of Paul, and how he explains this whole gospel and the reason for his ministry. 
He got this ministry not by God saying to Paul what he must do. It was born from the resurrection life of Jesus Christ. Amen.